Well, uh, thank you. My name is Tatiana. I'm going to present this crazy idea called Wood Wide Web that we had in at Ecoa Park. Ecoa Park is a this amazing area that you see on the picture. This is my office. I feel very lucky to work on this office. And there in between the palm trees, this is us testing our our creation, our design solution. Um, Ecoa is a park that um, has 238 hectares. Only 10% of that is for the activities and everything that we do for visitors, um, always uh, with the objective of environmental education. So Ecoa in Tupi Guarani, which is the language of our indigenous people here, means home. This is our home, and our home is our planet, and that's how we want to take care of it, as it is really as it is our home. It comes also from echo, echo to echo something, to give out the information, the environmental education that we want to do, and from ecology. This is the meaning of Ecoa Park. Um, so, in, during my scoping phase, it was this really deep dive into the company. I founded this company and I didn't know that I hadn't the idea of everything that we do there. And this process was an amazing, beautiful process with my team. So I worked with this, with a group of people, amazing group of people. And, um, and we've been experiencing, I think, like many other companies, uh, noises in communication. So we, we feel that uh, communication is an art. Sometimes you say something, you don't know if that person really understood what you're, how you're saying, what you're saying, what to expect from them. And sometimes we notice that the communication wasn't effective because uh, whatever was supposed to have as a result wasn't really what you expected. So we started looking at that and try to understand why. Why is this happening? Why do we have the, this noise? Um, it is a very serious problem, no. But it's a problem that we wanted to look at. And I think that most of the companies have similar problems. So our challenge was how can we sustain standards of efficient communication able to be adapted to different contexts? And different contexts is under an emergency, under a disturbance, or in our daily basis, or with different uh, target audiences, all the different scenarios possible. So how can we sustain that using tools, methodologies, how can we evoke on people ways to really uh, find um, ways to reduce noise in the communication? And who uh, we want to uh, uh, have that impact to? We want internal impact in our own company, and we want learners to really know their role, to share common vision, to, that they are able to, be, uh, to adopt and replicate efficient communication standards. We want them to listen actively give feedback constantly. We want them to cultivate collaboration and integration. And also, we want to replicate this outside of the organization. We want to replicate this in other companies that come to ECOA because we have three target audiences and one of them is the one that we're really targeting this to other than ourselves, which are other organizations that come to ECOA to do team building activities or immersions or integration events and stuff like that. So, as I said, it's an environmental educational park, uh, and we have lots of families coming. It's, it's located in southeastern part of Brazil, and lots of families come during the weekends for, you know, just enjoy enjoy the day there, uh, and also other organizations and schools. And we have these two public aud audiences, uh, our internal uh, group. It, it's divided by um, whoever works during the weekdays and whoever works from Wednesday to uh, Sunday during the operation. So we have that, that obstacle because sometimes those two groups don't really meet each other or they're not with each other on a daily basis. So we have 29, 60 employees and the ages vary a lot from 19 to 60, 66 years old. And they are divided into these two groups. And also we have two freelancers that come only uh, during weekends. And this is a challenge because, of course, you know, these groups are very um, different from each other and work in different shifts. But we still want to sustain the standards of efficient communication, able to be adapted in different contexts. And no matter what our context is, we want to 
by this, create memorable activities to all these target audiences, especially corporate events, but mainly ourselves. So we were calling ourselves, this group that I worked with, processors, just like in the name leaf cutter uh, colony, these processors distribute all the materials and information. And uh, this is people, uh, biologists and, uh, and environmental uh, specialists, uh, they they are in a, in a in a uh, supervision coordination management position. The colony it's everybody, including the professors, but mainly uh, the people who work from Monday to Friday. Corporate events and school events. These are are the people that uh, we were working with. And what happened during the discovery process was amazing immersion within the company. And we were reading a lot of stuff. We were using the forest as our lab. So we would go to the forest and understand how the forest was working. We would just sit there and uh, do our meetings in the forest and in different places. And it was amazing to see nature's principles there working as live, you know. In a, in, and we were in a very VIP uh, seat. And so we were there taking notes and understanding these models and how could we adapt these models to a more resilient teamwork, uh, integrating this, this synergy. And then we went back to the office and we used this tool, reverse brainstorming, that uh, we were looking only at bad ideas. Let's look what's the worst. You know, let's do whatever we can do to make this even worse. So we have other results. And it was a fun way because we were laughing out loud, you know, how, how can we make this worse? Okay, let's just not talk to everybody. Let's not use the methodologies. And, and that brought us really cool uh, perspective of, okay, this is not as bad. You know, we can solve this, 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 and that. And then we applied life principles, applying, you know, looking at the life principles. And we, we noticed that most of our problems that in the segment be locally attuned and responsive. And so we were looking very into that. Uh, how can we make, how can we solve this by looking into that and also other, other, other segments, but this was the main, main one. And we looked for biological inspiration. Of course, we found inspiration in ants colony and uh, termites colony and the bees colony. We have a bee hive there, so we were looking at them, but Unexpectedly, we found the most inspiration coming from mycorrhiza, the fungi, and how they have this network of interconnected relationships and mutualism and working so efficiently and being adaptive constantly. So we dove under the earth to really understand how they operate. And we started to get really inspired by that. How can we exercise systemic view inspired by that? How, how, how can we lead collectively? How can we understand their role? You know, they know exactly what they have to do and they know what the results they're expected to do. And they have that exchange and super efficient exchange. And how can we co-create and share value, be resilient, adaptive, life supporting, form partnerships and system focus, values based and optimize and be multifunction. So we just became fungi ourselves. And this was the inspiration and how can we create this network? And we were looking how they work and, and, and how can we create an experience to mimic that? And this came a crazy idea, which was to build this crazy structure with one person in the middle and the other people holding this rope that imitate the, the hi-fi, the filament, to make this structure stand still and to walk. And to be able to make this walk uh, you have to really, really communicate efficiently. So <laughs> I'm going to show you the, the result of this. So basically, uh, the idea is to make this structure move. And it's a game. So you have a determined time to, to do that. You have to uh, distribute nutrients and information uh among other other uh mycelium and uh in order to make this structure move you really need to communicate a person needs to go to left or right to make this structure move and time time is very little and, and, and this thing is hard to make a move and the catch is um if um 
um, they realize that if they get together in a fishbone structure, they will be able to distribute and share all this information, which are represented by um, represented by uh, little balls that has a number of 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 information. Uh, there are green balls, a number of nutrients, there are red balls, and they need to, to distribute that uh, evenly among other trees. And um, and they, if they do that in a fishbone structure, uh, they could do that in no time whatsoever. So this was the catch. They didn't take, they didn't, they didn't realize when we tested this. Um, so... <laughs> It was fun to watch, and then we did. We we tried this structure with the fishbone structure to distribute this, and it was so fast. In five minutes, they were able to distribute all fifteen nutrients and information among other trees. And most of all, it was a fun game, and and they really wanted to know more about mycorrhiza and the fungi. So we felt that uh, this was 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 an interesting process to really immerse ourselves in the life's principles. So essentially, we, we ran feedback loops within the locally attuned and responsive. Um, we work in collaboration. We adjust strategies as we went. So it was fun to watch that. Uh, to use life chemistry, teams must understand that they designed the game for everyone to win. So this was a catch, too, because when you separate them into groups, they feel that already they have they're competing with each other and that was the what wasn't the objective they have to be efficient in the in their goal but they have to most of all optimize their time and energy and the game promotes the self-organization and cooperation among the team so just like nature that builds from cells they had to understand from them as a mycelium but also from a mycorrhiza point of view and teams had to observe and assimilate what was working and replicate strategies that that weren't work uh, that was working and abort the ones that weren't working. And of course, there's more than one way to solve this, and one of them is the fishbowl. Nobody figured this out, but this was the the actual fun of the game. For us, the key learning uh, was to really use the biomimicry tools um, as we went because we new biomimicry and life principles before, but we never used the tools as, as a methodology. So for us, this was a, a, a changing game, really. And we, we were so surprised of all the tools that we could use and how amazing and transforming that is. And life principles as a, an evaluation tool as well. And the, the, the two other key learnings for us was, was, was a really amazing experience to really dive into this this scoping phase into the problem and solving this together and brought us together and, and it made us really a stronger group. And we had so many different outside factors. We had cyclone, politics was, went crazy in Brazil. We have heavy rain, mudslide. And we learned that um, disturbance is a creative opportunity and not a threat. So we, we, we use that as an amazing opportunity to innovate and to create and share value. So it was a, a life-changing experience. And, um, and that's it, guys. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. That is well so done. So beautifully shot. <laughs> like those moments of that was so beautiful. I mean, walking. It looked so fun.